right guys today on the channel we're going to take a look at gi joe classified robert grunt graves um i picked this up uh from uh well i got it uh in the mail from one of my overseas uh connections um it's no sir it, it's no it's no secret that you can buy some of these things out in asia so um you know got it a little bit early uh you know he kind of asked me hey you, you want want me to pick this up for you i was like sure send it over here we go um i this is my bread and butter you know uh, you know kind of like the foosh and some other people say hey you know marvel legends is my thing i think shardimus is marvel legends foosh is uh uh uh, uh black series well i happen to really like um gi joe classifieds gi joe has always been uh you know one of my first love in toys it, it might it might or might not have any something to do with having me join the military i don't know <laughs> but anyways this is a figure that's especially dear to me uh, i had it when i was a kid and i played with it to death uh so much so that like i had the eel and i have dial tone have a few other figures over there in, in my old school display but this one, I just compl I played with it so often that it just fell apart completely and it's lost to the ages. Uh, and the reason for that is number one, he was just a regular old Joe. And number two, he has a special, special designation, a special, uh, and now we talked about this already once before in, in my other video. Mr. Grunt here, Robert Graves Grunt. And we're gonna talk about why he's important, but let's take a look at the packaging real quick all of the great accessories that he comes with a little picture here you know kind of like a, a comic book figure a comic book drawing and then really cool rendering of him looks like looks like uh you know he's on a mission to rescue whoever came down on that helicopter uh so anyways um you've got that classified grunt you know uh, robert grunt graves uh number 87 in the line uh, again, you got some pictures back here. You know, that's the data pad that he's holding. Um, this is again, you know, what, what he comes with is accessories and another bigger close up there of, of who he is. So that's the box. I will not be keeping this. All right, let's get down to the figure. So why is Mr. Grunt here, uh, important to me? Well, that's because, <laughs> I spent the majority of my time in the military as his rank. What's his rank there? Anybody know? Can you tell me? It's an E4, otherwise known as a specialist. Uh, and, and I would say that's one of the ranks that, it's a special rank because as we talked about before, uh, earlier, uh, you know, uh, when you first get into the military, you don't know how to do anything. Uh, but, but this rank here is the is the most senior of the junior enlisted ranks. Once you pass this rank uh, you, and you become an NCO, um, at that point you're you're. Well, let me let me let me go back a step. An E4 is is been has been in long enough to know how to get things done and how the military works. Uh, an E5 is now a non commissioned officer. And he should know how everything works and should know how to lead, lead troops and should be a leader and absolutely um, leads by example. Um, and, but that gray area where this E4 lives, if you want a mission uh, executed off the books, on the books, gotta be done, can't be known about, whatever kind of mission it is, especially the covert ones, you go and get the E4 because the E4 already knows how it works. And even if it's a bad one, guess what? He's still a junior enlisted. He's he's smart enough to know how everything works, but still considered stupid enough uh, that he is expected to mess up every once in a while. <laughs> so it's almost like a, like a get out of jail free card, right? But not really. I mean, you still get Article 15s as an E4. So you're still going to get, if you do something bad enough, you're going to get jacked up. So uh, anyways, but once you hit an E5, a sergeant, an NCO, you're at that point now you're like, hey, you've been in long enough. You've already been an E4. You're a non-commissioned officer. You should know exactly how to get things done and you should be setting the example for the rest of the troops. You no longer have an excuse for, you know, being a dunce or being a knucklehead, uh, breaking all the rules. But as an E4, again, there is a special term for the group of hardcore soldiers 
that are like this. It's called First Rule of the E4 Mafia. We don't talk about the E4 Mafia. So if you want to know more about the E4 Mafia, go look it up. Anyways, moving on. Let's take a look at the figure. That's enough rambling, enough background. Um, so looking at this figure, um, he looks he looks really, I don't know, I, he looks good. I like it. I like the muted colors, which is absolutely some of the, you know, you want to go into battle, especially maybe in a in a in a in a forest setting, uh, evergreen setting. They, these are the colors you would choose, close to close to uh, olive drab, and then a muted brown, right, and then black. Uh, this is exactly what you would kit out with, and you probably color this black too, because you don't want to you don't want reflective surfaces reflective surfaces anywhere, and you would only wear that American flag if you were at garrison looking like that. Um, because, and this is just a little bit that I would do if, if I were, this is not, this does not take away from the cool fantasy that is GI Joe. I don't want it all to be realistic because then how boring, right? Uh, I want it, you know, there has to be some level of component of fantasy there and that's okay. I deal with it, but you know, I could bring a little bit of realism, kind of let you know where, where the fancifulness is. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the figure looks great. He feels great. He's got tremendous, a lot of detail on him, a lot of sculpting. Some washes would make him look fantastic. That's why sometimes you see these guys, uh, you know, with these figures and they look amazing and they look like they're custom. But now they've just added some washes to it and maybe highlighted a few spots and it makes it explode in color. I think, I think giving it a single color like this and not putting any washes to the figures does a tremendous disservice to the guys that sculpt these because there's so much detail in these. Oh, all the wrinkles and stuff. Um, it, it just looks fantastic. Uh, I really, really, really like this figure. Uh, again, maybe I'm biased toward his rank or not. I don't know. What's he wearing here? Is he wearing jungle boots? Or is he wearing regular old jump boots? What is he wearing there? Those don't look like Cochran's. I don't know. They don't look like anything I've ever seen before. I used to wear Matterhorns when I was in the cold. So I wore Matterhorns, Matterhorns a lot. I wore jungle boots a lot. And you just wear the plain old regular boots as well. And these look closer to just regular boots. Anyways, so let's get into it. Um, let's take off some of his accessories. You get, you get this really cool hat. Very nice. Um, I didn't wear this kind of hat. I had a, a different kind. But, you know, I, he, these are the kind of hats worn by operators. <laughs> the upper the special guy so yeah i didn't or maybe more people wear these hats now but i didn't wear this hat i wore more like a hat that dusty was wearing but in green or, or brown dan, uh, uh, tan so anyways there's his hat looks very cool fits him very nicely it slips right on no no issues with it whatsoever boom I'm, well there no issues with that very nice um i did have an issue with this m16 though uh, it, uh, it, it does have a removable clip or magazine, excuse me. Uh, and so it does look pretty cool. It, this, uh, it was bent. So I had to put a lot of heat on it, uh, to bend it back out, but now it's, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, so yeah, no problem there. Well sculpted, a little dry brushing would make this stand out incredibly well. So anyways, there's, there's that. And it looks like a regular old M16, A2 or A1. How do you know? You won't know because you can't tell what it says on the selector switch right there. Anyways, um, what what does he have next? Oh yeah, he has uh, he has this little he has this little weapon there, service service uh, service gun. So there's that, very nice. Nothing special there. Nine millimeter, and then he has his uh, knife here. Of course, mostly you would wear a knife this way. <laughs> You don't want to wear the knife up here because then you're going to be reaching for it. You want to, you, you don't want it. And what if you reach for it? Here's the thing. What if you reach for it and you do one of these? Oh no, I just, <laughs> I just cut myself. So if you're going to have it this high up, I don't know if they meant it to be like this, because it doesn't feel like they wanted it to go like that, but because then it gets in the way of this, but I don't know. I mean, I just put it this way because it feels like the designers wanted me to put it in this way and that's fine. But anyways, he's got his little knife. Uh, it's, you know, nice, it's nicely sculpted. 
nicely detailed. I mean, it's a knife. Now, uh, cool thing about him is he also has this little, ooh, it's tighter now. There it goes. Uh, no, it's floppy. I was grabbing it from behind over here. So here it is. It's floppy. He's got a little data pad right there. You know, the only people that got this data pad were, you know, operators. <laughs> Those are the guys with these things. But anyway, it's very cool. I'm probably going to put some sticky tack on it because I can't. Uh, it's just really, it's very loosey-goosey there. So I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if it pops off during the review. So anyway. Looking at his face, well-sculpted face, um, you know, regular Joe, regular Joe face. Matter of fact, that's the Falcon face over there. Um, it almost looks like they've improved on the Falcon face. It looks like they used that as a base and said, oh, we really screwed that up. Let's, let's, let's correct that face and put it on him. But the, I have no complaints about this face. It looks regular. It looks fine. Nothing weird about it. Nothing off. Nothing bothering me about it. Look to the side, look all the way around. Look, he looks up a little bit. He looks down quite a bit, but there's not a lot of articulation there. He can do to the side a little bit and look to the other way a little bit. So anyways, there's that. Um, uh, that's that's it with his neck uh, or his, you know, he can, like I said, he can look up a little bit there. But anyways, that's with his head. You can do a T-pose pretty, pretty simply. Oh, I forgot his backpack there too. So here's his backpack, the detail on that. It seems like they've made these out of harder plastic now, which I, I actually really, really like because the previous ones, uh, this, this post kept bending, bending real hard and putting stress marks around the bottom of it. So I like that this is better, harder plastic. Very nice. Is there, does it look like you can get into it or anything? It feels, huh? Nope. It feels kind of hollow in there, but but it feels sturdier, if that makes any sense. Uh, T-pose, real easy. I really appreciate that. But look, see that gap in there? And it's on both hands. Not as, since it's really easy to move here, it's not such a big deal. He's got a bicep cut, double jointed, very tight, tight elbows. Double jointed, pinless elbows, which is always a big hit. Uh, in and out hands there with triggers no extra hands just both trigger hands uh because he's got this vest here he won't be able to do much of a crunch actually he does he's he, wow look at that he is able to do one hell of a crunch you go that's an e4 for you excelling <laughs> yeah, what a joke anyways uh e4s baby e4s all right so there's uh, see that data pads keeps coming i'm gonna pop this thing off again probably all right, uh, he's got, I can't tell if he's got a cut up here. He probably does, but you can't tell because of the vest. He definitely does have a cut at the waist. So that's very easy, very posable. Drop down hips as usual. Uh, he's got a cut at the thigh as usual. He's got tight, very tight knees, double jointed penless, super tight knees. Um, let's see, does he have a boot cut? Jeez does he does have a boot cut a real boot cut there's there and he does have ankle pivot with a hole at the bottom how far can he kick up let's see is there any hindrance to it oh no he can he can kick up really good look at that really nice can you kick back it probably because of the drop well he can <laughs> that's unnatural anyway yeah he can kick up real good so same great gi joe posability uh, that I wish they would use on other figures. Fantastic posability. Um, do I like this figure? Oh, hell yes. This is a really great figure. Again, uh, you know, if this is what Hasbro can do, if they own the IP, just stop what you're doing with that other junk and concentrate on this. It looks like that's where you're going. Uh, so this is very worthwhile. I mean, I give this figure... Only thing I see wrong with it is that it's super tight. Uh, the joints are super tight, but those can be loosened up. Um, I mean, I don't see, uh, you know, very much. It doesn't have any problems. I wish he could look up a little better, um, look down a little better. Uh, again, I, I wish this wasn't, oh, this is gonna pop off. Look at it, it's already popping off. I wish this didn't pop off all the time. Let me fix that. There we go. All right, I'm gonna give it a, a 4.8 out of five. I can do it on a one to five scale. I'm gonna give it a, a 5.8. 
And that's because it's ticky tacky stuff. Uh, I wish this was better connected. I wish his neck did a little bit better movement and he's real, real tight. He's real, real tight, but all, but no issues in articulating anything. Most of the weapons came out fine. Uh, a couple of other weapons he comes with, I think, I don't know what the heck the kind of weapon this is. This, I think this is the sci-fi one that they had in the GI Joe cartoons. I, I don't know what kind of weapon this is. If you guys can, I never used it. I never fired it. I don't know what this is, <laughs> but it looks cool. I mean, cool. I don't know. I don't purport to know every single weapon the military used. I didn't shoot all of them, but uh, I shot enough to uh, be dangerous. Um, so anyways, there's this one. And I guess you get the Steel Corpse uh, cap if you want to put that on. So, yeah, there's that. Very nicely done. Halo-ish looking, I guess, with the visor. So there you go. Anyways, guys, like I said, do I like it? Absolutely. Um, it, uh, like I said, I think it's a 4.8 because of some sticky techies type stuff, but it is a really great figure. If you don't agree with me, it's okay. It's all right. This is America. You can, you, you are free to disagree. <laughs> so anyways, uh, oh man, look, I forgot to turn on my little thing back here. This hibernation chamber is great looking. Anyways, um, yeah, I definitely, uh, definitely like this figure. I definitely recommend it. Um, uh, and finally, we'll just get to the uh, uh, kind of cleanup here. Um, uh, 4 point, 4.8, go out and get this figure. Once it comes out in the U.S., I definitely recommend it. I'm probably going to get, actually, I got another one, uh, and I'm probably going to get a few more. He's going to be a great troop builder because he's got that standardized look, uh, and he's very close to an actual military unit, so I'd probably... I, that's why I picked up more of them. Uh, uh, last thing, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And, and as always, remember, we've got, um, uh, not as always, remember, but we've got that contest going on, that puzzle going on uh, in the uh, previous video. Now, I've upped the ante. If you solve the puzzle in the uh, Justice Buster and hi um, uh, uh, Hyper Sleep Hibernation Pod review, uh, and I'll put links up to them right here. If you solve that puzzle in there, uh, then you get a Ben Riley retro figure and you'll get an eel figure as well. An Amazon exclusive eel figure free. I'll send them to your house if you if you solve that puzzle. Uh, the only way to let me know the answer though, don't put it in the comments. Send me an email in the about section of my channel. Send it to that email address and, and I'll let you know if, if you've won or not. The last thing I'm gonna tell you is if uh, if you try to send me the email from your phone, eBay won't let you see my email address. So you have to go to a desktop. Uh, this is, this is not part of the puzzle or anything. Uh, it's just, e uh, not eBay, uh, YouTube won't let you see my address, uh, unless you're logged into a desktop and then go to the about of this channel. There you can see it. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate your support, really support, really appreciate your support, really appreciate you guys, uh, um, you know, subscribing. Uh, don't forget to like if you're so inclined and uh, let, let's let's solve that puzzle. 